to contextualize, I had been um, using the gunshot wound as a mark making device since maybe 2001 in bigger, bigger panels. And um, I was working on this series thinking I could maybe intensify the mark by making it in something small like this. At the same time, my son was um, in Iraq, and um, there's not a moment I wasn't thinking about. And in a, it seemed especially in New York, we just couldn't talk about it. There was nothing to say. Even though, you know, I had marched against the war or whatever, there's still the thing of the soldiers who were there. And the more I thought about it, I thought, well, if I did something that was like a collaboration with the soldiers there, then um, it's interesting how people become, learn that making a work of art out of something expresses what, what you're feeling in a different way. And my son had a command there, so he <laughs> talked to some people about participating with me, and he was kind of, they would say, maybe, and then they went to my website and they said, okay, yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it. Okay, what do you want us to do? And so I just want uh, you to shoot these things and make a hole in it, and it'll be a kind of a communication, and we'll, we'll go from there. We'll see what it, what it is. The word Sabachthani actually was in the Old Testament to begin with. And it means, you know, Lord, why have you forsaken me? It's about being forsaken uh -huh. e even f from, from God, from everything. And it's such an aloneness. And I have to say, I, I felt that during the, like, during the war, that you're just so separated and so, and I think it's a, it's a word that meant to be applied to anyone in that moment where you have to, face yourself alone. I've always been kind of fascinated with the very guttural mark. That's kind of what my paintings are about, the, um, a mark that's sort of unmediated, that trying to get to the mark that expresses something that you don't even understand, the artist doesn't know is there yet, and hasn't the language for something, something that you couldn't express any other way, and I have always tried to do that. But when I got the pieces in the first, it did what I thought it would do. If I could touch it, and it was tactile, for the first time I felt I had communicated with my son, and it's really, you know, we have all these new ways of doing it, but everything is so controlled about the information that you get, and so, that's how I felt when I opened up the box and I could touch these things mm -hmm. that I felt almost like touching Braille or something, that there was a, something was communicated there. Because before that, I just didn't even really feel like it was real because you, you see it mediated all the time and it seems like a media story. How I got started shooting um, was uh, my grandfather had a farm in Louisiana. I don't know, maybe I was four. He took me out to shoot at tin cans, and when they, they opened up, I thought they looked like flowers. I thought they were beautiful, and I never got over that. But in the beginning, when I started doing this, it was just really about the kind of mark that the, the, the gunshot was making, and somebody said to me, but you're eventually going to have to deal with the gun issue. And even though you, you're using it as an artistic tool, you know, you're going to come to this point that you're going to have to deal with with it and it's so fraught and i do talk about it and i do get asked about it and i think that the artwork just has to stand for people to take a look at it and decide for themselves is this something that was one of the reasons it seemed right to make the gunshot work it's such an american issue but we also then have to come to a time to think about 
the social versus the individual and what we have to give up to become what the best that we can be as a, as a, as a social unit. And I, it's not for me to, this helps raise the question, I think. Very much. All right, thank you so much. Thanks, all of you.